Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 10th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own first person shooter game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering ray casting and tweaking our first person controller just a little bit. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now. On with the tutorial. So it's become quite apparent at this point that our controller is a little bit slow, a little bit sluggish. So I think we need to modify a couple of settings to improve it. And you may have already done this through your playing around with some settings, but I kind of want to quickly go over it because we imported this from the asset store and it is a standard asset from Unity and it makes development much easier. But one thing I didn't really go over too much was some of these settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the move speed much higher. So let's have this as maybe 10. I was going to put 8, but I think I'll put 10. Uh, and the sprint speed. So the sprint speed is when you hold down shift and you want to run. So let's have this not quite double the speed, but we'll say 18 maybe. And I think the rotation speed probably needs to change as well because um, it is a bit slow. I want a bit faster. So we'll have three. So it's three times the speed. Uh, jump height, gravity. I think we'll keep them as they are. Um, to be honest, I think maybe just them three settings is probably all we need to kind of make this feel a little better. Uh, let's see how it looks. If you want yours to be you know, a bit more quicker or rotate a bit quicker, then yeah, I think that's better for me at least. How are we looking there? <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'm okay with that. Uh, but what I would recommend is maybe play around with at least those three numbers just to kind of get uh, a controller you feel happy with. So the big thing about this tutorial is going to be ray casting. And I touched on it on the last tutorial about what ray casting is for. Uh, but I want to dive a little bit more into why we're using ray casting at this point. So the idea of ray casting is our controller, if I can find them, so currently we are looking at this wall, but we have no idea how far away this wall is from our player. And this wall could be a door and we want to only be able to interact with this door when we are like maybe this close to it, like real up close, but we don't know how far away it is. What ray casting will do is it will send an invisible line from our controller right here out and whatever it hits first, in this case it will be the wall, it will tell us how far away we are from the wall. So if we are maybe 10 from the wall, we can't do anything. However, if we are two away from the wall, we could probably interact with it, which means we can have some UI on screen and all that stuff. And the same applies for enemies as well, but we will get much more in detail with enemies and how ray casting works with that when we come to implementing enemies. Uh, for now though, let's get our casting in place. So let's go to our scripts folder and let's right click, create, and let's create a new script. And I'm going to call this player casting. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now, it is a fairly simple script, um, just a couple of lines of code to it, but it is somewhat complicated, but I will explain how it all works. So the first thing we are going to want to do is get rid of void start and the annotations because we don't need them. But we do need to declare a variable and that variable is going to be used for other scripts to interact with. So much in the same way as we did with our ammo, our global ammo has a variable which other scripts are allowed to talk to. We need to do the same here because we need other scripts to know how far away we are from things. So we're going to have to put this as public static and we're going to have this as a float because it is a decimal number we don't want it to be a whole number because that just won't update as often as we would like and we'll call this distance from target and the target would be anything that the ray cast will touch uh, next what i'm going to do is i'm going to have an internal version of this because as we know Anything that we declare as static is not going to appear in our inspector panel. But I do want everything to display in the inspector panel that, you know, this number that we can see just so as we know how far away we are, because we may need to modify the object that this is attached to because things may get in the way that we don't want. For example, the gun. So what we'll say is serialize field and we'll have this also as a float and we'll call this to 
target. So this is what the number we'll see inside of the inspector panel. So in void update, we need to basically work with a raycast hit. And we're going to declare a variable technically inside the update method because it doesn't necessarily need to be declared up here, but it's going to be something that the raycast will use. So we will say raycast hit, and we will call it, well, as it's predicted, just hit. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Next thing we need to do is say if, and in brackets, it's already, see, it's already predicting what we're going to do here. This is why Raycast is easy to write and easy to understand because it's kind of predicting what we're doing already. And it is indeed correct. So physics.raycast transform.position and then comma. And it's not quite right here. We do need to use transform. However, we need to transform direction. So transform direction and the direction that we want it to shoot out at is forward now we could have used forward but the idea here is it, we use a vector 3 so vector 3 dot forward close bracket semicolon and you can see there it's already predicting our output is going to be hit so whatever number is now inside that that raycast is going to go into hit so we can then open curly bracket, hit return. So we know that our distance is now in the hit. So we can say our distance from target is equal to hit.distance. So that will make the static variable the number, but we also need to make the internal version the same. So we can then say to target equals hit.distance and save. And it really is as simple as that. The idea of a raycast does appear to be really complicated when you think of what it does, but it genuinely isn't. It's as simple as just having these couple of lines of code, and these will tell you how far away we are from an object. So if we go back into Unity now, after it has uh, compiled, and what we'll do first of all is we will attach our player casting to the um, object here, our actual capsule. We may end up attaching it to the camera. I'm not 100% sure yet. I just want to see how this will react to different things. So drag and drop onto player capsule and then click on player capsule. And then down here we can see player casting. And as I mentioned, distance from target isn't there, but to target is. So let's press play. At this point, we should be able to see how far away we are from an object. Oh, let's uh, scroll this down. Okay, so 23. Okay, so as I move around, you can see just how far away we are from things. And even though this wall here, it currently says 9.78, even if I move it to the left, you can see it does increase. So that implies to me that our Raycast is indeed working as intended. And even though this wall technically is the same distance away from us, because this section of the wall here is further away from us, it would make sense that the two target is saying 13.45. So if we move real close to it, there we go. You can see that we are literally right up against it. And yes, I know we've just glitched through, but that's not a problem. We can, uh, we can work with that. Camera is a little bit funny, so maybe we should look at the camera as well. But looking at all this now, you can see that the ray casting is working perfectly fine. So that will give us the perfect opportunity to be able to send out information to other scripts now. So while we're at it, let's have a quick look at our camera and establish why our camera is being a bit silly. Uh, so let's have a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the game object, drag it out to here. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit and press play. So what I've got here is two screens. One's got the game view on and the other has got our scene view on. And we can physically see what's actually happening now. So I think the reason it looks a bit funny is because, yeah, our gun is, is uh, interacting with things it shouldn't do. It's glitching. That's all about layers. But don't worry, layers is planned later on in this series. So we'll stop all that glitching. That's perfectly normal, I would say. Excellent. So yep, yeah, everything is working as intended. So next tutorial, what we're going to do, I think we're going to start adding a little bit more 
to this. I mean, really, we're just that there's no sound or anything apart from our gun. So what I think we want need to do is add in some footsteps. I think we'll add in some footsteps, so there'll be some randomization there to the different footstep sounds. Uh, and we'll add in some audio background as well, whether it's just some ambience or some kind of music. I've not quite decided yet. I think ambience might work better than the music, but I'll, I'll have a think before we get to the next tutorial anyway. Uh, so remember to subscribe, click the notification bell, stay up to date with every tutorial I upload in this series. I'll see you next time.